Hi guys, good afternoon. Today we shall uh, discuss in brief about the placement of pterygoid implants. So pterygoid implants are placed into the pterygoid plates that is between the lateral as well as the medial pterygoid. The fusion zone between three bones that is lateral pterygoid, medial pterygoid as well as the distal part of the maxilla. So where these three bones meet, it's called as a fusion zone. And your implant has to engage in that fusion zone. That fusion zone will be approximately about 30 to 15 mm in length. And your drill should go through that fusion zone. And as well as you have to engage your implant in that fusion zone. Okay. Placing your implant in the tuberosity area without engaging in this fusion zone will not be considered as pterygoid implants. In many conventional methods, we place the implant, maybe the angulated implants, we drill and place the angulated implants in the tuberosity of area. That implant will be placed in the cancellous bone. Later on, you will not have proper stability in that area. So, for proper engagement in the pterygoid zone, you have to place the implant in this fusion zone where three bones meet that is the lateral pterygoid medial pterygoid as the distal part of the maxilla meets it's also called as pterygopalatine fissure that fissure is lies below the pterygopalatine fossa okay this is the area that is your target area where you're going to engage your pterygoid implants while placing the pterygoid implants since you cannot place or drill it straight through your occlusal line or through your tuberosity you cannot drill it you can drill it straight if you drill it straight it will go towards the lateral pterygoid and it engages in the soft bone and you will not get much of stability and torque so you have to drill from the buccal edge of the maxilla that is you have to start the drill from the buccal edge of the maxilla that is from the buccal edge of the tuberosity so if you are placing the double pterygoids First is start placing your first implant starting from the distal root of the second molar. Angulate medially, it's about 25 to 30 degrees. Drill it. You can't drill the whole length. You have to drill for some distance. Then you check through tactile sensation. You check for the bone, availability of the bone. Okay. If there is a hardness, bone is there. Then again, you start the drilling. Then you go further inside and then check for the availability of the boom and also again you can drill so this is the way step by step you have to go first is drill for some distance look for the availability of the bone look for the hardness then you can go for the second drill. this is the way you have to place the pterygoid implants and it should be angulated it should be angulated from buccal to lingual. it should be placed from buccal towards the medial see to it that you will not go near the hemilar notch okay don't touch that area hemilar notch if you are going to drill through the hemilar notch, the patient may have sense, I mean, have pain and uh, inflammation and swelling later on. Okay, so you can place two implants. That is the double pterygoids. The the first uh, placement, the first pterygoid implant, you can uh, start from the distal root of the. You, you just to mark it through the distal root of the second molar. I am talking about in the edentulous area. Okay, you just see that. So imagine that you are drilling from the second root area of the second molar. So you tilt it 30 to 45 degrees towards me medially, towards the hemilar notch area only, but you are not go going to deep into the hemilar notch. You are going towards the medial pterygoid area. Okay. So this angulation will engage the your implant in the that is the area between the lateral and the medial pterygoid more towards the medial pterygoid where that part of the bone between the medial and lateral pterygoid more towards the medial pterygoid it's a very mineralized bone okay there you have to engage your implant so that is in a double pterygoid one starts from the distal root of the second molar that is through the tuberosity and again from the edge of the tuberosity that is distal to the tuberosity area you can place another implant so both the implants will engage towards the medial plate of the pterygoid if you are drilling with the proper direction and proper angulation. So placing, placing your pterygoid implant, always keep one thing in mind, placing your implant in the tuberosity area that is uh, sometimes is called as tubero pterygoid implants but uh, not, uh, not engaged in the pterygoid, it's not called as 
pterygoid placement. Pterygoid implant has to be placed, has to be placed in the fusion zone where the lateral pterygoid, medial pterygoid and the distal part of the maxilla will meet. There is an area of pterygomagdalian fissure which lies below the pterygopalatine fossa. That area you have to engage. If you can engage that mineralized area, there is a mineralized bone that is the cortical bone. So you will have longevity of the implant means the stability will be good. So I can show you here in this case, uh, this is the pterygoid implant that are angulated on uh, both the sides. I placed it, I started from the buccal edge of the ridge from the tuberosity. It went towards the medial pterygoid plate. So it engages that the mineralized bone. So these are the two pterygoid implants both placed on both sides. And this is a case where I have placed double pterygoids here and double pterygoids here. So double pterygoids always gives better engagement. And also one more thing you have to keep it in mind, pterygoid implants, there won't be any uh, what we call uh, in pterygoid implants, the main thing is the engagement of the pterygoid, the pterygoid plates. So and, uh, one more thing in the, in the pterygoid implants is that there won't be any cantilever kind of effect. Okay, no cantilever here. Okay, that will be the end. That is the end of the uh, implant where it engages, where your processes engages in the pterygoid plate. There won't be any cantilever effect here. Okay, so this is the thing. If you can engage double pterygoids on both the sides and as well as your uh, anterior implants in the nasal fold properly uh, that completes your uh, upper implant placement that is here have placed only single implants on both the sides here double pterygoids on both the sides so double pterygoids plus proper anterior placement of the basal implant piercing the nasal flow will give good stability of all the implants placed in the maxilla so in the same way here in the lower mandible, that is, we are talking about pterygoid implants. In simple, I'll tell you about the lower also. In lower implants, only the important portion is your uh, better for in the mandibular canal. You have to take care of those two areas. Otherwise, it's very easy to place the implants in the mandible on both the sides. Okay. Between canine to canine, that is between first femoral to uh, first femoral on one side and the first femoral on the another side. This area is there, no? It's very easy to place. No issues. Even if you place till the end of the mandible, till the edge of the mandible, no issues, nothing goes wrong. So this is the way to engage in the lower anterior mandible. So, so the main thing is engagement in the pterygoid. See to it that you have to place the implant in that uh, zone, fusion zone. Okay. If you can, if you are good at placing your pterygoid implant in that fusion zone where three bones meet medial lateral as well as the distal part of the maxilla meets so your engagement will be good and your implant stability torque everything will be good so if you can't engage it in that fusion zone so usually pterygoid implants will be a failure thank you for watching this video we will talk about uh, placement in general about all the places that is the upper nasal floor lower and the angulations placement in the posterior mandible also six in detail we'll discuss in the next video thank you